Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein I was just noticing something. Um, so I just turned off the request for cryonite rods over here. Uh, because we have a shortage of them and we've been pouring an awful lot of them into into modules. Three, uh, 35,076 times 30. Um, yeah, clo uh, we're getting close to a million cryonite rods that we've put into this machine right here. Uh, as it's spamming efficiency modules. But it seems like... Uh, we don't even need the efficiency modules right now. They are piling up like crazy down here. Shack Cat, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Yeah, so we've got no bots bringing efficiency sixes over to this chest because it's already got 50. Um, we've got the filters saying don't put efficiency sixes in this cargo wagon, and presumably that is because... Wow. Yeah, we have, uh, like 5,000 efficiency six modules up here. So, we are getting close to saturation. Um, in fact, if I just, you know... Put a limit on this right here. Um, like I maybe should have done in the first place for the top tier modules that get produced here. Um, we might not be short on cryonite right about now. So I'll get rid of that so I don't have to think about it. We'll let, we'll let more cryonite rods get delivered here, but... I should saturate and chill out a bit quite soon. Ian Noah, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we also reduced the priority on all the drop-offs for modules, so it's basically a drop-off of last resort. We want everything to go into science or whatever it is we're actually trying to produce. Uh, before it turns into modules. At least that's what we're looking at for the moment. Looks like we have a decent amount of downtime for the ships. Fantastic. I was thinking as well, um, if I were to design this again, as much as it would cost a little bit more fuel, I think I probably would have the ships drop stuff off at Hagen, uh, and then fly to Hagen orbit, and then Hagen orbit itself would be like a... kind of like a parking spot. When the ships are already empty, they'll come here, land somewhere, and then that spot is going to give them dispatch orders. It'll cost a little bit more fuel because even taking off from orbit does cost some energy. Nine gigajoules. Um, but it's pretty trivial as far as antimatter cost is concerned. Um, and it would mean that we could have an unlimited number of spaceships in the system. Um, I imagine... I'm sure even the idle ones waiting their turn to land would cost some UPS. Uh, and you don't want to literally get like 500 ships or something. But I was thinking about adding more ships to the system and it we could actually add too many to the point where they have trouble landing here. Uh, theoretically. But first they'd have to be able to keep up with all of our outposts 
uh, be, be able to bring back every single core fragment that our outposts are spitting out, and that's a bit of a tall order. Pardon me, still trying to boot up my voice. Okay, so what's next for today? How are we doing for Arcos? Well, we can at least see an Arcosphere G or C. That's something. I'd still like some more, but I, th I think it's going to be a little while before we see the 500 Arcosphere collectors um, to do another run. It's still dynamic emitters that are the problem. Um, I don't think it's a speed issue. I'm pretty sure it's been a material bottleneck. Because I've seen these machines not running from time to time. They only spit out 2.43 per second, though. Oh, all of these are going to... Nano material? No. No, they are going into the bulk rail loaders. This part's already saturated. Um, but yeah, I guess we could spend a few speed modules and speed this up regardless. We've got 16... None over here. Oh. 17. There we go. So we are making some speed modules at the moment. Wow. This is very insert a bottleneck. But in reality, it's material input bottleneck, so who cares? But yeah, when we do have the actual resources, uh, a superior inserter is a little bit slow. Partly because it wants to put in freaking 500, 600. The recipe does call for 500 nanomaterial, damn. But it's probably going to go to like 1,000 or 1,500 nanomaterial before it bothers putting in some deep space catalogs. Yeah, there it goes. And it needs 10 catalogs, which is most of one swing. So now we're going to go all the way back to a thousand nanomaterial before we put in more catalogs. Bruh. How many do I need to get the right number of speed modules to max this thing out? Where is it? Four, eight... Uh, and then I think it's like 13. So like 20 or so. We've got 16 here. Don't tell me we're painfully close. 21. No, we should have it like now-ish. Cool, cool, cool. And there are no tier 9s in the mall at the moment. Very well. Here comes a train bringing even more nano material. Oh, now we're short on eights. Cool, cool, cool. So this is all the speed modules we're getting anytime soon. Did you get those modules used on the crushes? Uh, those are still going to be running for like a few real-time hours today. According to our back of the envelope calculations. Here, I'll, t I'll, I'll show you. So we've got... Ooh, 63 stacks of biomatter at a rate of 4.6 per second. Uh, it's still going to take 1,300 seconds or so. 
So about 23 more minutes game time. Double it because we're at 30 UPS or so. Thought they would be done by now? Nope. Waffles, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Good to see, uh... Quantum processors getting spammed. Alright. Speed, speed. And furthermore, speed. That's probably just enough. Plus 1400. Plus 700. 5 megawatt each. For crafting speed 11. Or 1 megawatt each for crafting speed 10.5. Alright, so that is now 3.5 per second. That's a bit better. The poor inserters are working almost all the time. Uh, and this thing is probably way faster than it needs to be now. 195. Five no head, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh do we can we get away with more speed in this? We can. How fast does it eat the dynamic emitters? It eats most of them. Well that's where a lot of the dynamic emitters are going. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, I'm pretty sure the space loader here. Yeah, that's why we put a limit on this. Um, greater than zero? Well, it seems to work. Huh. You'd think this wouldn't really accomplish anything. If we don't have a belt control here, I'm pretty sure all of the dynamic emitters... No, it's about half of them. Go this way. But if we do this... Isn't that going to work out to be the same? I imagine... We could prioritize the rail network instead. I kind of want to right now because I want uh, I, I want Arco collectors. So we'll say that there has to be a stack in here before. I mean, I could literally just set it to like greater than two for about the same effect. Um, but right now I kind of want the Arco collectors. How many consumers for dynamic emitters do we even have? I imagine there's... Well, apparently there's Efficiency 8 modules. Uh, there's Arcosphere Collectors. There's probably a Science. And there's Nanomaterial. Besides that, we've got Mole Stuff. Mole Stuff. Belts. I didn't realize Deep Space Loaders consumed them. But we don't need that many of them. Lab. Stabilizer charging station. More mole stuff. Mole stuff. Yeah, pretty much that. Okay. Maybe I should consider direct building it down here as well. Uh... The Deep Space Undergrounds don't have as much range as the Purple Belts, so I'd need to add some plating. I don't really particularly feel like it. Also, I set this as super low priority, which is understandable most of the time, but I think this one is only set to negative one, which is in effect super prioritized. Philip B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, that's going to get delivered over there first. 
How much does these cost again? A quantum processor, so they're not going to be that easy to spam. Everything else is relatively cheap. Maybe it's time we had another build for this. I could put it right there and do the direct belt over this way as well. Uh, I'm sure I calculated it based on what we would need for science. Which is... Probably just what goes into nanomaterial. Nano engineering data. Hmm. Well, it's not like we can't dismantle it if we don't need it later. Is some of that was already in range. Um, blueprint. Get rid of these. Get rid of these. Tiles. Flip. Can't flip with the electromag. Did that just get deleted, or have, has it been added to our pile of junk? It has been added to our pile of junk. Okay. Should be able to flip it with this. There we go. So right about there. Gonna need some plating... Uh, here we go. Gonna need some electromag facilities. Don't suppose we've already got those in here. Doesn't look like it. I think next time I would make a longer construction train. But then again, it's sized so that it fits in these, so I guess I'd have to make the but well, I don't have to make the blocks bigger. It's not that big of a deal if the construction train blocks a bit of an intersection for a little while. I suppose we could even do it now. There's the electromags. And we... Oh. I didn't realize that would fit. It's a bit cozy, though. Let's make a little bit of room, at least. Okay, could you please park over here? And we got our floor done, fantastic. Scobix, Philip B, welcome in, hope you're doing well, good to see you again. So I'm just going to need to copy paste flip this. Also, Ah, uh, man, I forgot the train stop floor. I think it goes here. And here. And the plating train is just getting back home. Unfortunate. All right, so I guess I'll just rotate this for the moment. Wait, how close does it? Oh, there's only one place it fits. Cool, cool, cool. I don't have any red deep space undergrounds. Those are just what I had on hand at the time.
I'd have to add some... I'd have to add some floor over here again. Where's our train? Please wait more than five seconds. Okay. Requester. What? What? Did that in wrong. Goes right about here. And provide a right about here. Okay. Sleeping pirate, welcome in. 55 as well. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Switch off the LTN. Actually, can we connect it like this? And like this. Uh, short trains should be fine, not that I can think of anywhere that we would use them for this. Okay. And... Didn't realize we had tier 9 modules over here. We really don't need them. Save those for something else. Nice to get to the point where we're able to forget about some tier 9 modules, though. This is like 50-50, right? Nope. Oh, these already have tier 9s in them. Yeah, I don't think... This build, honestly, since we're making two of these now, I doubt if we need any tier 9s around here at all, but I'll leave that one up above as it, it, I got disoriented. I got disoriented. I thought this was the build to the south. GG. Forty megawatts. There we go. Do the bulk rail unloaders work when a train is not perfectly aligned? They do. So it looks a bit weird, but we could have a single bulk rail loader here, uh, and it would actually fill both cargo wagons, although only at half the speed. Uh, and I guess we want. Is there no beacon for this? I guess that makes sense. Kind of want to copy this. Why is there still a train coming? Uh, Kale, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, um, that's looking a bit wonky. Does that actually mirror what we did up here? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So, beacon. Do I have a beacon too? Why am it? Why, why do I even carry the tier 1 beacons anymore? Alright. Speed modules, efficiency modules. 1600. 1000. Plus 400. Plus 100. Minus 80. Crafting speed 7.3. 
And this can probably just have a slightly different ratio. There we go. Is that still going to keep up? Does it matter? We've got like... 4,800 antimatter canisters. So 480 Arcosphere collectors worth stored here. I think that'll be fine. Also, no, those are for export. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this has to be able to keep up with this. It's not like this has an indefinite production that it does. Okay. Gonna need a little bit of... That looks kind of wonky. Does that not line up the same way? It does not, that's why. Of course the construction train bots tried to grab this stuff. Now they're full. Um, why don't we put this over here? Oh. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Except then there's no room to get a loader in here. I might just add a little something like this. That should do it. And you've already got an... You don't have a name. Dynamic Emitter Liz. No wonder it had default settings on the LTN provider. Um, so that should be it, I imagine. Let's turn on the requester. And if we've got the quantum processors and cryonite rods, they should be on their way shortly. Both of those are a bit suspect, though. Our storage for quantum processors is quite small. And they're made pretty slowly. Was this pointless? 5.5 .5 per second-ish. This consumes 3.5, so maybe not. Even though there are other consumers. Crynite rods are going to take a little... little bit of time to catch up, though. Oh, um... I think I do want... To prioritize, if we're building from here, I want to prioritize this, uh, the Arcosphere Collectors, actually, before we export. Maybe I should say the same of Nanomaterial. Okay, back to the mall. Seems good. Should I do something about quantum processes? Oh, we ran out of blue. So no, we didn't. This machine specifically ran out of blue circuits, so. Our sushi is not really doing what it's supposed to. Uh, I guess I could just upgrade it to deep space belts. We're out of Holmium cable anyway, here it comes. I think we should redesign uh, quantum processors. These are already tier 6 modules though. 
So the, the recipe is quite slow. 16 seconds for one quantum processor, stack size 50. And it's very, very thirsty. What's our rate at the moment? Max rate, less than 5.5 per second. Okay. I want to see what a maxed out build for quantum processors would look like in any case. We did blueprint this... I'm I already ported over the uh, Astro and Bio uh, Astronomic Insight builds yesterday, down to one machine each, probably for the rest of the playthrough. Um, but I've been a little bit too lazy to do it yet with energy and, I always want to say mechanical, material insight. Um, I already disabled the requests over here. Might wait till that runs out a bit. But for now... Let's see plating. Uh, let's see how small we could make a final quantum processor build. How many solids did it need? I think it was electromag. Yeah, it is. Five solids. That makes things a little bit more complicated. Theoretically, I mean, we ran into the same problem yesterday. Theoretically, we can do five different solids uh, dropped off at the one bulk rail unloader. It's going to get a bit cramped sometimes. Um, but depending on the rate of consumption, and we know Holmium cable is going to be very fast. So quantum phenomenon, quantum phenomenon, phenomenon data is going to be super slow. Even site crystals quite slow. Processing unit is per stack just as slow as imasite crystal. But then we've got more than half a... We've got like 64% of a stack per, per recipe for Holmium Cable uh, and half of that for Holmium Plate. So I don't think this is going to work so well with one of our cute little direct insert builds. Unless we have like one machine per build. Well, even if we do... Because, because these recipes over here are quite slow. 40 seconds, uh, and except for blank data cards, they only need one input from each solid type. So we're able to only ask for like, what was it, 120 stacks? That, and that's more than we need. When we're down to 20 stacks, we summon another train for any of these catalogs. Um, and we're a little bit greedier, 150 stacks for blank data cards. So the shape of this build, uh, the, the shape of this recipe kind of lends itself to getting away with this. But to do the exact same thing with Quantum Processor, I don't think would work very well. Which begs the question... Meep meep. M three hundred and thirty three p. M thirty three p. Repetitive beats. Thank you so much for the nine months with Prime. Welcome in Twitch, baby. Thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Might need to go a lot faster. Judging by how empty this is, probably yes. 
I'm not going to worry about it for the moment. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I can't escape the conclusion that we should have two train stop drop-offs for this uh, as it gets faster. This build is perfectly serviceable up to a point, but once we get above a certain speed, um, we're having trains arrive just after we completely run out of a resource, for example. Also, how fast is this? Uh, we do have a wide beacon too. Tier 6 modules, 5.5 .5 per second. If we were to have... Let's say we go for the wide beacon too. Tier 9 modules. Uh, 1400, 5 megawatt, minus 80, okay. Uh, 0 0.6, so we would still need, like, 9 machines to go faster than the previous build. 8 machines would be slightly slower. And what do we have here, 12? I don't think we're making a super miniature build ever for quantum processes. Yeah, 12. So it may as well be this layout again. And then it's just, do we do something a bit different with the train drop-offs? We should have plenty of empty space here, right? How much are we requesting? 110 stacks. 110 stacks. 110. Two train loads. Two train loads. Okay. Well, I I'm pretty sure we can fit more than... 10 extra stacks of these other items. of the slower ones. Maybe we literally just keep this as it is and upgrade the middle belt. I'd kind of like to use some loaders and stuff though. Obviously these inserters are a bit slow. We could redesign it a little bit, I guess, but I think we're going to broadly end up with the same thing. Just without the parts that have been sort of tacked on to the old build. Some of that cable is barely reaching the end. And we're looking to make a faster build. Yeah, no, it is too... Oh no, theoretically the Cable should always reach the end. It's just that it gets taken in chunks, so it won't at first. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I guess we'll do a little redesign here. It'll be broadly the same thing, but it won't be so... slapped together little by little. As our needs change. So the most we can fit is 12, realistically. That's going to be way more than... Th it's going to be really hard for the trains to keep up with, isn't it? 200... It, that's five stacks of cable per second. That's a lot. You know, looking at this, I think it actually makes more sense to make it on the ground. We'd need to bring uh, quantum phenomenon data down the elevator, and we'd have to take quantum processor data, uh, quantum processors up the elevator, and then all of this stuff, which is much, much faster. doesn't need to go through the space elevator.
And then we wouldn't need, uh... We wouldn't need something to take, uh, quantum processors down the space elevator either. Okay. I think we will consider that. It's kind of going to make upgrading it a little bit easier because we're not shuffling around the existing build. So we're going to need a bunch of spaceship floor. Underneath... these buildings. Maybe I should just use multiple train stops here. Do all the slow stuff from the side. How fast is the slow stuff with this? 15 per second, 31 per second. That's a lot for processing units, but only a third of a stack. Loads and loads of plate and cable. Okay, how much is each side? 126. So really we'd need one belt per three of these per one of these two resources. That's kind of a lot. That would be a good way to line it up. Mm. I, it doesn't have to be a straight line. We could do a V shape again. Perhaps. I think it would have to be a wider V shape. It's going to be hard to fit this in half a block. I could build it in the middle, I suppose. That would make the whole... ...number of train stops we need to support this issue a bit easier. That's in the middle. Okay, so something like Is that still in range? Yes it is. Figure out where we're putting our beacon in I can't rotate it like that, can I? Rude. There we go. Might just move the beacon up or down a little bit. So like... Oops. Around the center. Something like that. We only need one output. I guess we could have two for the sake of storage. It's a lot of storage. No, I think we'll just have a splitter. Do we ever need to pick these up with short trains? Probably. Oh, definitely. Definitely. 
because they're being dropped off. Here it is. To make the energy four. Hmm. I could just have a container here. Limit these two and God, I w I'm really wishing I had the version where loaders would put stuff straight into trains. And we could have one nice big container. All this rebalancing though. Why don't we just put, like, a splitter over here? And then a container over here. Sure. But if the short train takes from here... Well, no, the short train only happens upstairs, right? All of our consumers of quantum processes down here. Uh, well, that's going to need to be changed. Come to think of it, we've stopped making AI cores because I haven't patched this over to use the new system. I think we just need LTN requests for... Quantum processors, bioelectric data. Where the heck is... I don't think we added... Oh, we did. Bioelectric data. So it's in LTN. Uh, but yeah, we need to add those things to an LTN station. Uh, I don't know if I've done the same thing with advanced neural gel yet. I think that's also on a dedicated schedule. We need to patch that over. But let's not get too distracted just yet until AI cores become a problem, I suppose. Which has probably already happened. Um, but the idea is... When it's... Normally, when it's one resource, we do something like this. But we need one belt for the Holmium plate, one belt for the cables. That's going to be a little trickier. With this pattern. Like this, maybe? But then there's no... Yeah, we can't do that. There's no room here. Let's make a nice little... It's easy to see on this side. Nice little waterfall pattern. Oh, maybe with... No. I don't think it's going to be so easy as to just use underground belts to make this happen. Whoops. Surely. So how are we going to get the other one in there? With a splitter. Move that back a bit. That's wonky as hell. So 
that really what we're going to do here? Surely we can do better than that. Right? What do we normally do for a straight line when it's one resource? Something like this. Maybe we don't do the... the V shape. How do we do this with... with two inputs? It's probably not that hard, actually. I've probably done it before. Here we go. That actually looks pretty tidy. Maybe even... like this? I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of don't hate this. So that's going to be Holmium plate and cable. Uh, and we still need three other solids, albeit they're all kind of slow. That's why I did the sushi belt. Can't really use sushi belt with loaders. Do I really want to do three loaders for three different... I guess it's only one loader for two different resources. If we use half belts. I don't love that there's going to be, like, one odd one out. Quantum phenomenon data. I guess it's fine. Now, do we want this on the inside or the outside? be easier to do the slower inputs on the inside, right? Hmm. What if we just do it like this? So this is going to be the three slow resources. Um, in which case, I guess this could be on the other side. So, uh, how many belts do we need? Two of each, right? Yeah, two Holmium plate, two Holmium cable. That's not going to fit. Unless... OK, 
Okay, and then I... There's something I didn't think through, but I think there's an easy fix. So we're going to have... Let's say that's Holmium Plate. And instead of that continuing on from the third one... This one goes here. Easy enough. Yep, that'll do. Alright. Table is probably what's going to be running out more often. So I'll put that on the side that's more visible. And then we copy paste flip. And this goes around about here. Okay. And then... What's the slowest resource? It's got to be the... Phenomenon data, right? Ah, oh, good sneeze. Okay. How much do we need to request anyway? 320 stacks. We should be able to request a train load and a half of three different resources here. Push it all to one container and there's at least one stack of any given resource uh, in the second container. That should be fine. So, something like this. That doesn't quite work. Bless you, thank you. Alright, so this is going to be like... Like that. I guess we could just have more belt here for visibility. kind of wonky. Should we just do a long arm with the other resource? Fine. That one is going to be uh, data cards. Quantum. And, um, and this is processing units, imosite crystal. It's obviously... The rate of the whole thing here is still single digits, right? 7.8 per second. Uh, 
it might be possible to squeeze it so we could double the build. But we're already using up a whole block just to have more room for the trains to come in because the throughput of a couple of the inputs is ridiculously high. So I don't really care for that. Um, in any case, output can just go like, why is that backward? Output could just go something like this. Of course this would be in the way. Let's just put this here. That's fine. Why can't I flip? Because there's a train stop. Alright, so that goes there. Are you doing this on the ground? Yeah. Because there's four resources that get produced on the ground. Um, two of which get consumed very, very fast for their stack sizes. Uh, and there's quantum phenomenon data, which barely gets consumed. Um, so we're going to bring that down the elevator and bring the quantum processes up the elevator instead of bringing all four of these resources up the elevator, then making these, and then taking the quantum processing, uh, some of the quantum processes down the elevator. Hello, hello, Dilka, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Welcome in, Vavasant, as well. Alright, so that's going to go over there. And... Um, I mean, I could make another train stop, but no. Maybe I could move this over a bit. Put it in the middle. Ish. Insofar as that's possible. That means we're going to get perfectly symmetrical belts coming out of here. I do like that. Uh, perfectly symmetrical belt length is what I really mean to say there. And I guess we could let the train leave in this direction as well, if it really wants to. Okay. So, spaceship floor. Uh, spaceship floor. Brush, 5x5, five five. it's actually 7x7. Seven seven. What? Why is it not placing? O okay. I can't put it under the machines that are already there. Apparently. What? Cannot build on spaceship floor. Oh no. Huh. I wonder why electromag facilities can't be built on spaceship floor. Well, that was a good waste of time.
I mean, I guess we could... Uh, technically, we could still build the same thing in space. I guess we will do that. I really wish there was an easy way to convert purple to black belt. Why would you... Oh, right. That's fine. Okay, so... I guess... We're gonna build this over here. Yeah, there's no upgrade planner that lets us convert purple to black, surely. No. I mean, you can build black on the ground, so I guess it would make sense, actually. But, yeah. Like, on the plus side, there's a whole lot of work I don't have to do changing how our trains move certain items ra uh, around between the space elevators. Alright. Um... Should probably start by mimicking the most complex part. Loaders. All right. So this goes here, here, and this one's a bit different. But that's basically it. This one, number four has its initial inputs from here. Number three, doesn't need to split. And... May as well just copy this. Wait, I can just... place these on top, right? It's a little bit easier. Still got the filters. Fantastic. Uh, and I guess that goes here. I think it's actually cheaper than black ones. Wait, what? No, the purple belt is much easier to spam than the black belt. Oops. And copy, paste, flip. Uh, also, we don't need... the continuing belt down here. Seifercat, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Um, Alright, so this goes here. This goes here. Let's just override this. 
then we can figure out the rest from there. One forty iridium bars versus five bars for a hundred belts or purple slash black. Yeah, but iridium's free. Black belt requires naquium. The iridium will flow forever. Long arm, like so. Okay. Something like that. And like that. Neck was never a bottleneck for me. I mean, you have to go get it uh, outside of a solar system, and it has a stack size of 10 unless you do the processing on the spot, which is very complicated. It needs lots of different inputs, and it has junk outputs of outer of two different resources. All right, so let's copy paste flip this over here. And that goes there. And then we need a bulk rail loader, a nice big container. Where do I want to put this? It's fine. And we'll do the usual. Limit these to 100 stacks. And then allow short trains. Provide stack threshold 100. That's fine. Okay. What next? Just have to do the train stops? I mean, we should probably do some test inputs to make sure all of this actually works. Set filters black. Get rid of these two. That filters blacklist. Uh, I'm realizing I'm going to have to turn the inserters. No, let's do it this way. And this is just for plate and cable. I wonder if one super inserter is going to be enough on each side here. Uh, and then same deal over here. All of these inputs are quite slow, right? 15 plus 8 plus 4 it's like less than 30 per second. Yeah, no, that sh should be fine. Oh, we need outputs already. Um, could kind of make it a bit more symmetrical than I was planning earlier. Oh, how about this? Cut down on the belt a little bit. And this one. Um, and then 
these two up here. That doesn't work. I guess we could do these two down here in the same fashion. That's sort of pseudo-symmetrical. Alright, so why are some of these not running? Did I not fix this on this side? Wait, oh, the deep space undergrounds don't reach that far. I think we can fix that fairly easily. There we go. Why is this belt backward? Cool. So that is a nice big fast uh, quantum processor block with a lot more room for the trains to be able to support our most rapacious inputs. That's fine. Purples need a metric ton of imicite. Yeah, but like, once you start getting imicite from core frags, you're just overflowing with it immediately. Okay. Start tidying up. And we'll add a bit more floor. Oh, copy paste is kind of easier. to smooth out some of these odd-looking gaps and stuff. I need this. Well, actually, leave it running for the sake of testing. Kind of want this to look a bit more consistent. Maybe something a bit like that. This doesn't actually need floor underneath it, though. Well, that looks kind of weird. We could do our usual. Now it just feels weird that this part is floating and this part doesn't have to. Or can't float rather. I don't hate the floating platform over here, though. I think we'll just fill all of this in. Necessarily hate these little gaps. That's not too bad. That actually looks pretty good, I think. Okay, should we actually build this thing? Maybe not with the speed nines just yet. Well, actually, I mean, we're doing the same number of machines. 
God, how many speed modules is this? 12, 24, 48, plus 11, 59. I don't think we've got 59 speed 9 modules to spare at the moment. In fact, I came back with zero. Um, did we do anything to stop the production of speed 9s? No speed 8s. I think I kind of put nanomaterial on the back burner. Yeah, I sort of did, but I'm not going to run out of it just yet. Oh, there's already... Oh, quantum processes, right. So now we're short on Naquium cubes. Oh, hello. Arcosphere collectors are sitting here and not needing to be picked up already. Yeah, there it is. 500. Nice. Let's go get some more. Uh, places that we haven't been for Arcospheres. We've been here... I think we've been to Dark Flare, Caltrops, and Shattered Skies, and... I think we went to Creepy Hollow as well. Let's see. Haunted Hollows, that's way over here. Shattered Skies, Stardust, Grape Shot, Godash, Feline, Dark Flare, Creepy Hollow. I don't think we've been to Spectre. Yeah, we haven't been to Spectre. Let's go there. Everything ready? Fantastic. Okay. Uh, what's the address for Spectre? Asteroid Field 1162. 1162. Uh, here. Double one six two. That is what our destination will change to as soon as we arrive at this destination. Boanestra. What are we still Oh, we're using that as storage. I forgot to decon the storage chests. But I don't really feel like turning the ship back. Although it is a little bit slower for the container stress right now. What are these purple chests even doing? Nothing. Yeah, that'll be a little bit better. Are these actually full? They are. I think we're probably out of storage space in the mall. Okay, not quite. Yeah, that's right. The bots love to keep adding stuff to the same place where it already exists. But nevertheless, it does look like we're getting a bit short on storage space here. Okay. Uh, so before that distraction, we were looking at why we're not getting speed modules. We did lower the priority of modules, but... Where's the actual problem? Processing units? Oh. No, it doesn't... Uh, it... it... oh. Oh. Well, that would probably help. That would probably... Help quite a lot, actually, if half of our capacity to make processing units wasn't uh, just kind of being ignored. Undead Hunter, welcome in. Yeah, um, so who knows where our bottleneck is after that happens. Maybe it'll actually be the stuff that we need to make processes, uh, circuits, somewhere, uh, somewhere along the way. 
This one back here, uh, this side of the block uses wood as a priority. Oh. That's true of all three of these, which might be a bit overkill. Um, yeah, depending on how badly we need more circuits, that might just annihilate our wood supply instantaneously. But the reason we had that there uh, was as it basically as a sink for wood. Oh, this one's this one is copper. Or oh, not copper, um, stone. This one is stone. And this one is not. So these belts for wood are not supposed to be here. I see. 93 per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's only this one that's based on wood. And I'm seeing a distinct lack of... Copper? Huh? Oh, it does have lower priority. But still, to think that we're not saturated on copper... It's kind of weird. We're saturated on copper core frags and copper ore. So... Do we actually need more processing for copper? Oh, this is using ye old wide area beacons. That's an easy upgrade. Let's go do that. Shum. Uh, so wide beacon twos. I don't know why I'm even carrying wide beacon ones at this point. Uh, I guess I could have done this with the construction train. But then it's slightly more cumbersome. Uh, where are our beacon twos? Here they are. There's no reason to carry only five. Do we have more? No. I only occasionally bring them down the elevator. Because we need them so rarely that... It's easier to just do it semi-automatically. Why use the train when you can teleport? Uh, because we can get there in fewer clicks. But significantly slower and we can't jump into the editor while we're in the train maybe I should bump up the uh, request for white beacon twos since we'll be using a few more of them oh we still have rubo wait 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 this is why we still have RoboPorts over here. Get out of here. As we'll get rid of this block as well. Anyway, uh, so that's 16 beacons, sure. And we're working on making some more. I suppose we'd better empty out the train here. should 
do it. Now then. Here come our beacons. Uh, I guess we're going to have 22 of these. Let's wait till we hear the sound. Teleporter feels kind of weak, considering a tiny antimatter ship can do pretty much the same and has no cooldown. I mean, the antimatter ship takes time. I do wish we could set up a teleporter network that went across surfaces, though. That would be... That would really make it worth the effort. You could make them like 10 or 100 times more expensive. But if we if we could have a teleporter network that just allowed us to go to any teleporter on any surface, I'd be all in on that. All right, let's go upgrade our copper the easy way. Probably a mod for that? Maybe, yeah. Uh, I don't know, it uses the same menu uh, sort of system as the train networks, so I wouldn't be as surprised if there's some kind of, like, engine reason that a modder can't just make it so that you can teleport through this menu to go to other surfaces. Oops. All right. Beacon 2. Why don't we just start with this one in the middle? There's two beacons for the entire block. Oh. That's not the one in the middle. And... We'll stick with the tier 6 modules. For obvious reasons. Uh, I think this needs to be, like, 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Okay. There we go. What is going on here? Rude. Um, is the left side in range? Kind of hard to tell because there's a robo network over here. That would be a yes. And we can't quite reach this one. Alright. That should be enough. So, uh, we should now see our bottleneck shift a little bit. Copper, ingot. It's not really showing a change just yet. Might take a moment. Wait, don't tell me... No. There's no way this was frame capped. Those are our only copper blocks, right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to check the... Yeah, that works. Actually, maybe I could have used a different ratio over here, because this is for five prod modules, as opposed to four speed modules. Um, if we go one faster, two megawatt each. Nah, I'm happy with this. But what's our ratio like? It should still be saturated for enriched copper, and then for fluid... 
Uh, for fluid, we're still very positive. It's really just a matter of what we can fit. Are we pumping the fluid fast enough? Yeah, I think so. Oh, this one, not so much. Huh. That's weird. Because every other machine is having no trouble whatsoever. Hmm. Well, I guess as the molten copper gets more saturated, it should go faster as well. I really hope I don't end up redesigning this as well. Which would mostly just be because of trying to get rid of the need for pipes. For the, uh, for the ingots. I think we already considered trying to put this, like, right next to the, uh, thermo facilities. If these were maxed out... But with some efficiency... 800%, 100%, minus 80. These are one megawatt each. I could maybe live with that. So how fast is this? Uh, it's about two to one. It's almost perfectly two to one. Hmm. So something like this, maybe? Um, it's very easy to keep up with the enriched copper and the pyroflux. Pyroflux is always super slow. Don't tell me I'm going to redesign all these freaking ingot blocks again. I don't think steel is going to change. Steel is quite slow. Merely 3k per second. They tile, so it's fine. Base rebuilds are the best. Six years of base rebuilding. So it has our consumption of... Copper ore. Gone up. Yes, it has. Oh, it's kind of wavy still. That's weird. How fast is this? Uh, stack and a half per second. It's not too, too bad. And let's check the rate of production of ingots. Okay, so it has gone up. Not by that much, and it looks like it's leveled out already. I have to admit I expected a more dramatic shift than this. Ah, uh, see, now the, now the machine up the top right is fully saturated. So yeah, I don't think we have to worry about that. We probably did test this with tier 9 modules. I just wish it didn't require so much clumsy piping. So we've got uh, 12 thermo facilities. Is there a universe where we can fit that much better? Hmm. 
without the pipes and stuff. Oh. We're also going to need the uh, spaceship floor for some of this. So we'll just start by emptying this out. Uh, and we need presumably just one machine for the entire block. Was it chemical plant? Yeah, chemical plant. Advanced chemical plant. Okay. That can probably just be under its own little mini beacon, potentially. But let's say it's under one of these beacons. 216 per second. Uh, could support a lot. 15 of these. So 30 thermodynamic facilities. In other words, more than we're going to fit here. What if we build it around half block? Or even... There's no middle here. Two. So if we put this right about here... How many of these could we chain together, I wonder? It doesn't have to be direct, direct insertion like this, or direct piping. Oops. But I don't know that there's going to be a nice, neat... way to do it like this. What if... There's no middle pipe. What if we did it kind of like this? No. I mean, maybe. No, I don't like that. I think I like it better on the sides. We'd need either, like, an underground belt and pipe repeating to supply the pyroflux and enriched down the middle, which I don't hate too much. How many times could we fit this? Well, how close together could we put them? Not that close. Clearly. Uh, we'd have like... Underground... Splitter and Loader. Which means one more tile. So minimum three tiles apart. Something pretty similar for the uh, for the pipes. Okay. Well, I don't see where we're fitting a beacon in the middle, though. I guess... Can't really put it on the sides. We're one tile short. I'm covering all of that. I guess we could stretch it out slightly, but... I don't think we're going to get anything like the density... that we had before. We've got... 12 thermo facilities under one beacon slash on each side. Well, no, it's, it's more like six on each side. 
if we're looking at it that way. So I guess this is denser. Oh, wait. Okay, what if we just put these four tiles apart? As standard. And we could fit a beacon in the middle. And we could have eight of these. I kind of like that. Uh, eight of these on one side. With, supported by one advanced chemical plant. Which I might put under a mini beacon. And then we'd have the same... What's the water for? Oh, right. Yeah, we could probably have the exact same drop-off station here. Something like this. And we're either not having as many machines down below, or I think we'd put like a mini beacon up here. Can do 10 and cover all with two beacons? I suppose. But I was thinking we could probably get away with, like, a compact beacon 2 for this thing. Uh, and we wouldn't need... Because it's, so, it's so much faster, we definitely wouldn't need tier 9 speed or efficiency modules. I haven't even figured out what the right ratio is there, but you can see that we can easily pull that off. Could probably could probably not even use a full compact beacon. Uh, we don't need a double, is what I mean to say. So that is minus eighty percent power with just a regular compact beacon. Oh, that is slightly negative on the enriched copper. Oh. Well, it's not like these things are expensive. Wait, does compact beacon and compact beacon 2 have the same... the same number of modules that fit in? That's weird. Effect transmission efficiency. A hundred percent from the compact beacon two. That's busted. Wow. All right. Uh, and presumably this would be. No. Plus 400. Okay, so it's 50-50. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. We do have, like, a, an extra chemical plant on one side of the block if we're going to do a double block here. But good ratios. No need for pumps and storage. For the molten copper. Really, really good ratios. Positive, but very close to one to one. And that's 14 ingots per second. I kind of want to line this up. Something like this. And we're going to want to make plate out of ingots on the spot, as usual. Okay, uh, we do need to deal with the dirty water. We're just exporting that. 
That makes sense. Doesn't need anywhere near as many advanced furnaces either. So this is like one to one. Well, almost. It's it's ten to twelve. But we won't need anywhere near as many prod nines with this build. Just twenty four for each side. I mean, uh, we could squeeze these in a little bit as well. No reason not to. Still got that kind of symmetry there. Um, do we have room for rail down this side? We do. Uh, so it was just fluids only, right? Undo doesn't work after I jump back across surfaces. Yeah, we could even just copy this. Okay, so this is Pyroflux. Which... We can just connect here. I guess we could turn this around. No, that doesn't line up now. Regardless, that works. Uh, and this is export for... Dirty water. So then we just need... There's only one solid output from this, right? And we just need the enriched copper to come down this way. And we don't need a splitter this time. And I guess we could make that a little bit closer as well, but then it doesn't really have that pseudo-symmetry up here. Alright, so there's plenty of room to get the ingots out with belts. Um, let's say we mirror this on the opposite side. Fortunately, we can't flip this. That's going to be a little bit of a chore. Really? That's because of the signals. Uh, now I don't know where this fits. That looks about right. Judging by the... Yep, there we go. Judging by this part right here. Uh, and we could probably just do... If we're going to do the entire block like this, I think I'd rather have... No extra traffic down here. And we could do Pyroflux on one side and dirty water on the other. Let's do the Pyroflux input up the top left. What the? So dirty water's gonna go this way. That's on the wrong side. Well, I guess there's... no. There's not going to be room. 
to do a big tank on this side. We could do it like this, but I don't like how cramped that is. Let's just do the same thing we did over here. Um, water input is missing. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, because we flipped it. I see. That's fine. I guess there's no reason not to share fluids across here. Okay. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here. And pyroflux input from the left. That'll do. rid of dirty water on the right. Uh, and then we'll do pretty much the same thing. Down below. For the plate and we don't need train limits anymore. Uh, we'll do pretty much the same thing for getting rid of ingot and plate, except there isn't going to be a convenient spot, uh, I think, to do a copper plate machine. Judging by the fact that this has tier 3 speed modules in it, um, I don't think we're going to have to worry too much. Probably doesn't even need to be... I was going to say it probably doesn't even need to be under a beacon, but that must be false. If this has uh, speed 6s in it, or how about like speed 6 and efficiency 6? Why do I even have speed 5s in here? Get out of here. Alright, so how fast is that? It can convert 9.6 ingots per second, and this can spit out 28. Good lord. Uh, can we fit this here? No. Hmm. I mean, I could put it over here. That feels really awkward. I kind of want it to be in the middle. You know what? Uh, apart from what we've done here, I wouldn't actually mind having a big storage of ingots that the plate machine can take from and that the train stop can take from. I realize we've got ludicrous storage of molten copper here anyway, and the machines are like kind of fast, but... I think I'd rather have a more visceral idea of just how much we've got stored. Not to mention, we got rid of the fluid storage, 
And I'm pretty sure this store's much more, uh... It's a much denser storage if we store it as ingots. We did the math on that pretty recently. I think it was like a hundred times or something. It was at least ten times denser. So if we do... Hmm... Let's say we just do like a 4x4 four four storage here. Well, let's figure out what these belts are going to look like as well. I guess that's pretty straightforward. Why is this deep space belt? Bruh, why have I been using deep space belt? Purple belt. Let's fix this. And this is going to be a little different. Everything's just different enough that. There isn't much point tracing over it. Okay. And I kind of want... I, I do want to have some visibility. Of the flow of ingots. So it's going to be something like that. And these ones can just... Actually, why don't we do it like this? Down this way. That way we don't have to add something asymmetrical. We will not anger Symmetria this day. Alright, so that's all the plate making its way down here. Uh, I guess we'll just do another compact beacon 2 for this one. And I'm sure that's going to be way faster than necessary. 29.2 ingots per second. It's actually just fast enough to convert everything into plate. Uh, how fast does it spit out plate? Holy... Um... Almost three stacks per second? 3.2 belts? Hmm. What if we put this down here? And then... I think I'm satisfied with only two belts per plate. Praise Symmetria, indeed. Welcome in, Veldak. Black is cooler. I like the purple belt. As much as it's hard to tell which way things are flowing on it. The only trouble with this is we don't have... Um, storage outside of this for the plate, but I think that's fine. We can consider copper and iron and all this stuff to be... Everything that's going to follow this pattern, which is to say iron and copper, uh, is going to be just plentiful. We're not going to have to worry about more of it coming. That said, I guess there's no harm in 
making this even faster. How much power does this use? 800 kilowatt. A little bit more than I was expecting, but still pretty small fry in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so we need to put spaceship floor. Uh, seven by seven, I think it is. Yeah. And this time we can actually place it. I don't think undo works. Let's just clean that out ourselves. And I'd like to place some hazard concrete and stuff for the look of it as well. Concrete, hazard, refined, refined hazard. Let's see. Hmm, no. Why don't we just have this facing the same way? May as well fill that out under there. Uh, this one can face the opposite direction though. Why don't I just make this... Oh, copy-paste. Uh, refined hazard. Refined hazard concrete left. Nine by nine. There we go. That's not left. Okay, I guess one could argue it is. I don't want these facing the middle. There we go. That looks kind of neat. Should we do anything with refined concrete as well? What the? Okay, that just makes it look like there's more hazard concrete. I think this is fine. This is much neater than our last build. And we're fitting 16 thermo facilities in one block. With a max rate, with max, uh, max tier modules of 28.16 ingots per second. Uh, we haven't maxed out the assembly machine to turn ingots into plate, but it can already do it faster than the block can produce them, so I think that's fine. And we're going to want... There's, there's not going to be anywhere that this train stop is not in the way of a nice, clean connection here, is there? That's a little bit rude. Um, 
think we could perhaps... Is there any way for this to reach up here? There kind of is. So we can let LTN know about all of the ingots up here. And... Oh, that kind of sucks. What? Wait, 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 wait. Sneak it in this way. That's actually kind of tidy. Is this going to be long trains only? No. Alright, so we can set that to... Ride stack threshold 100. Limit both of these. And that should be fine. You can barely see that there's pipe spaghetti. Uh, belt spaghetti. Fix the pipe connections? Which ones? Oh. Where would be the most elegant spot to connect this? How about here? That should be perfectly fine. It's only 48 pyroflux per second. Alright, let's test this thing. Um, so we need sulfuric acid, uh, water, We need to delete uh, dirty water, which happens over here, actually. Oops. We need pyroflux. We need... Uh, copper ore. Pretty sure there's no other solids that get dropped in here. How fast does this consume at tier 9? Only 60 per second. Isn't it weird that we have four belts with this? Actually... Seventy-four copper ore per second is less than one purple belt. Um, yeah, it is kind of weird that we have this many belts. I'm sure we had purple belts when we designed this thing. So that is actually pretty strange. Um, looks like it's working. What? This is the real world. Well, the... The less fake world. Um... We kind of need this wire connection across here, but... I, I suppose we could always run it across this way. Yeah, that's kind of a weird choice. Oh, also, this can just connect across here, making this a little less strange looking. I kind of want the fluid tanks connected like so. I think that's a little bit neater. Which means... Wait, how are we going to connect this up here? Right row.
Red wire? Yeah, we'll... Uh, I think we can put the red wire across here. As long as we're looking for a specific signal from these. It's going to be a bit invisible, but it, it does work. Um, could we not do a huge tank? Like so. And then... It's gonna be a lot neater... To get our water in here. That's fine. And that is a copious amount of storage for the water as well. It's also fewer containers, which means a little tiny bit better for UPS. Just minimize the pipes there. I mean, I guess we could do this for a bit more symmetry. It's not exactly necessary. I don't hate it. Okay. Seems good. And I think we'll put the compact beacons like this. I guess technically I could put a beacon up here, but I'm not going to do that. And there isn't really any reason not to connect these. Alright, so why why is it stopped? Because we didn't have water? Wow, the water is actually super fast. No? 168... 166 per second. Yeah, no, it just had to fill up a bit more. Okay. It would be weird if we'd built it like this before, if the demand for water was so high. So... what's the problem? Oh, that would probably help if we put some in the first machine. Wait, what? That, that that's not right. we've got enriched copper to the end of the belt. All the furnaces are active. Looks like all the thermo facilities are active. Looks like this whole thing works. Fantastic. And we're not belt bottlenecked here. At least not for the moment. 
Very neat build. Thank you. All right. I think I just about need a break. I kind of don't like how this wire is all bendy. Let's do that. That's, in a sense, more symmetrical. Veldak is anticipating words on stream. Yeah, I like this build a lot better. A lot better. What the hell? We're not even following our conventions here. Sulfuric... I'm surprised how... I'm surprised at some of this build since I thought I built it relatively recently. There we go. Alright. Let's train stop names. Settings. Seems good. I suppose the ingots can be consumed to make plate here after LTN has been made aware of them. But considering that this stuff will get belted straight through anyway, I don't I, I doubt it's gonna be a problem. I'm stealing your idea. I was working on it as well. Which idea? Maybe we should bump up the provide priority a little bit. I mean, not priority. Uh, the provide threshold. We could even make it so that like a hundred stacks are reserved for plate at any given time. So that makes 500 plate from one stack of copper ingot, one to five, which means 500 stacks of copper plate, which completely saturates this. Just by ignoring one train load of ingots, as far as LTN is concerned. I can vibe with that. Okay. Kinda wanna start replacing the old builds with this, to be honest. It's not exactly a high priority, but I don't wanna like forget that we did this. Yeah, this is much better. I mean look at look at all this mess of pipes to somehow get the Molten copper over here at a decent rate. That's not going to cut it. All right, after the break, we'll start converting these. And uh, I, most of it's probably still going to be using tier six modules, but that's fine. How many modules do we even have right now? I've got 48 efficiencies, 20 prods, uh, there's none over here, there's none over here, and one more prod module. <laughs> I mean, we did deprioritize modules, but that's still a little bit shocking. How are we doing for those emitters? Oh, that's right. Dynamic emitter. No quantum processors yet. Is this it? That's... Yes. Yes, it is. You're going back to the depot. No, you dropped it off somewhere else. Rude. Alright, well, regardless, that's going to take some time. How are we doing for antimatter? I, I 
took it off of massive priority. It looks like we're fine. It looks like we're doing just fine for antimatter. Do Valkyrie allow to support loading only the LTN request? Nah, the, the invisible inserters in the bulk loaders are dumb. No filters or anything on those. I mean, by default, the mod will only work with, like, things like iron ore or stone, stuff like that. Okay, uh, let's save real quick. Let's fire up some words on stream. Sethras, welcome in. And doop doop doop. And words. All right, we'll start words on stream in about thirty seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay. Nicely done. Fantastic. That's got to be fantastic, right? Yeah. All right, let's pause the words and continue with the factory. Um, okay, I guess first things first, let's switch off the requests for one of these blocks. And we want to, once this thing stops, we're going to get rid of every last drip of the dirty water. Actually, there's already like... No, we'll wait till this finishes. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, and while that's happening, let's look at... Let me just put in a little note here. Uh, how about an up arrow? Upgrade in progress. Um, while that's draining out, I want to do the... Uh, quantum processes. Let's head back to the mall for now. Looks like we've had less spaceship downtime lately. Well, we'll give it some time. Let's see how it goes. Um, so how do I want to do this? I think I would like to just take the stuff we've already got here and shuffle it around a bit. It's going to be easier if I do that in person. Let's go to the mall, grab the construction train, grab the floor train, and is it the same number of machines? I think it was, right? 12? Yeah. We're just upgrading it so it can comfortably support max level modules. It's a lot of wires. Alright, we'll park right about here, I suppose. And park this one here. Maybe I should have brought the floor train first. As we pick up items, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Oh, did we blueprint? I guess I'll wait for the train to stop. If I jump into editor mode, it's going to eject us from the train. How's this thing going? Still saturated. Gonna take a little while before we run out of inputs for these. Okay. Blueprint. Quantum processor. Tier 9. Tiles, train stop names, snap to 86.25.1. And that should be fine. Okay. Now we need to start picking this stuff up. I think I will send the construction train away for the moment. That'll make it a lot easier. Turn off my RoboPort for a sec. Grab these. 
How much plate is here? Quite a bit. How much room do I have? Not much. How about... We make a little temp storage. May as well put the processes in there as well. And most of this stuff. Guess I'll wait for the belts to catch up. Why am I dancing around these containers? They're not doing anything. Wait, 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 wait. No, I already... We're going to have different uh, LTN requests. For the new stuff. Don't need to copy that. Alright. Floor train... Might be able to handle... Picking all of this up. Might. Guess I should grab anything purplish. And blue circuits. Also speed modules? No, it's fine. Okay. That is going to take a little moment. Park down here. It's a little bit closer. And we can finally get rid of this. Okay. Now for our blueprint. And it looks like the temp stuff is not going to be in the way. Right about here, please. And before the construction train comes back, we'll place the blueprint properly so that whatever's in here gets put back where it belongs. Alright. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We haven't done the requests yet. That's good. We won't have a an army of trains approaching just yet. I forgot to remove the uh, cheat items. From the blueprint. It's not like we have a supply of these though. And... It's gonna be... late. And cable. Where's the cable? I guess there wasn't much here. And all the slow things are going to be on the sides. The LTN request combination, uh, combinator mod has a nice feature where it disables the request signal when the combinator is placed via blueprint. Nice. Does it automatically reactivate or do you have to activate it yourself? Um, where's the construction train? Here it is. We need more deep space belt. Uh, and we don't have the tier 9 modules. 
So we're just going to use tier 6s. This will only be slightly faster than what we already had. And only because we're not running into any belt bottlenecks or anything. But it's ready for us to put in max tier modules and have the trains and belts support it much more easily. And maybe we will not be redesigning this again. That's the idea anyway. Okay. Please come back with more deep space belt. Um, we want this and this and this. All of these. All the slow items coming in from the side. Okay. And then we just have to do the LTN requests. Which I should have done before making the blueprint, albeit I do recommend having the combinators switched off when you're placing the blueprint. Alright, so we're just looking for like 1.5 train loads of Imosite Crystal, Ch Chikushu, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Processing unit, uh, Imosite Crystal, and Quantum Phenomenomenon data. Quantum phenomenon data. Going into electromag facility and outcomes quantum processor. Crystal and phenomenon. One point five train loads of each should be more than sufficient. And since we can fit three twenty stacks here, uh, even if we had exactly two train loads of two of the other resources, that'd be twenty stacks for for the third one. So it'd all flow through. And then these ones are just simply going to be plate and cable. Phenomena to two to do to, indeed. Welcome in, Dylan. Life saving tip if you see an EV that is building up a white gas around it, run away. The battery's about to explode. Damn. Menomino. Okay. Uh, it alerts you that there is such a combinator. Okay, cool. Let's get rid of this. And we need plate. Uh, since we know the throughput's very high, let's ask for like three train loads. Plate and cable. And I'm gonna steal this. So that the name is mostly done. There we go. Switch that on. And that should be it. Are these balanced? They should not be, actually. Okay. 
Although, since they're going through the splitter here, I guess it doesn't matter. We need yet another trip for Deep Space Belt. Why are we bunking? Only emptying the rear unloader on the sides? Uh, oh, I meant to just push stuff up here unconditionally. Just like that. And that'll get done once the, uh, once the train comes back, the construction train. Okay, that should be it. Quantum processor. And when we want to upgrade it, we're just going to swap in some higher tier modules. But considering there's no productivity bonus with this, and considering that we've always struggled to supply the materials, uh, I don't think that day is coming just yet. Where's our construction train? There it is. ETA, 30 seconds or so. How's our copper doing downstairs? It's already empty. Uh, there's quite a bit of molten copper remaining. Did we kill the request for pyroflux? We did. And we've got practically no enriched copper. So we could probably think about Bumping the Pyroflux next door. It'll be easier than moving it around up here. Uh, that's the last of the dirty water, so let's trigger a delivery here. I imagine that'll only take a few seconds. How much is here? Way more than 10k. 50k. Cool, cool, cool. And we'll change this schedule here to say... Also wait for inactivity. It'll wait till the last dregs of... Uh... Dirty water have been pumped into the train. Or at least as much as the fluid system will pump. There's probably going to be exactly two dirty water left in these containers each. Um, sulfuric acid is going to stay in the same spot. Water's... well, water's cheap. I was going to say it's going to stay in the same spot, but we're going to swap it out with huge storage tanks. Um, and the plate and ingots uh, are largely going to be in the same spot once we're done here. So that block will be just about ready to get swapped out by the time we get back down there. Okay, any items that we haven't placed? Nope. That is our build. And there seems to be a shortage of the phenomenon data, at least on one side. I did put quite a bit. I didn't exactly balance it. Uh, quantum phenomenon data, let me guess. This is the thing that I said we might need to speed up. We've already got a tier 2 beacon here, so that just leaves tier 9 modules. Uh, the material throughput is really slow. As much as I want to do another build, if only so that we don't have scaffolding here, I don't think we're going to improve much on this design. At least not under a half block. I do wish I'd made the blocks a little bit bigger for a number of reasons. Not half being that we can't really fit 
the maximum number of these machines around one beacon. But we do need our junk outputs here regardless. Maybe I should do like a big double build for these anyway. I mean it would just be it would just be some extra laser facilities. Don't really need to worry about the modules right now. So what's our rate here? 4.38 per second. And this thing alone wants 5.47. What's wrong with this train? Nothing. Good. That's what I like to see. Oh, the shadow makes it look like there's no plate here. I was wondering what was going on with that. Like, there's, there's a really big contrast between the plate on this side and the plate on this side. Yeah. I thought I thought an underground belt must be broken or something. But nope. We've got inputs all the way down. This is a lot tidier than what we had before. Okay. Um I guess even if it's temporary, it might be a good idea to make another one of these. It only takes blank data cards and thermo fluid. These are actually practically free, as far as we're concerned. So the, the idea that we're bottlenecking on quantum phenomenon data is actually kind of silly. Let's make another build for those. Oh, and... Since there were a few items missing... Well, not items so much. But okay, there were items missing, but... Um, mostly LTN settings and train stop names. Let's just update our blueprint there. Um, select new contents is not going to cut it because of the LTN train stops. Not LTN, uh, bulk rail. Tiles, train stop names, snap to 86251. And that's that. Okay. So what if, what if we do try to do a whole block just for the quantum phenomenon data? So similar to this one, I'm going to start with, oh, no, it's probably fine. I don't think the modules got overwritten when I updated the, updated the blueprint. It was laser facility, right? Quantum phenomenon data. Do 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 do. Maxed out speed modules. Uh, not maxed out speed modules in the beacon, please. I do think. Uh, on the face of it, it's u it's more UPS friendly. If we have a slow recipe. If we just max out the crafting speed. But we get 15. 
crafting speed 15 for 285 megawatt per machine, or... Plus 2100, plus 700. We could have 10.5 per machine for one megawatt each. Uh, and that power production has to come from somewhere. That's not UPS free. And you also have to actually keep up with it with belts and trains and whatnot. Alright, so how far up does this go? We can do probably 12 on each side, right? I don't, I don't think there's any universe where we're fitting more than that. Alternatively, we could go for like 18 on each side. I don't know where we're going to find room for some of the train stops, like the junk outputs. Um, well, we only need one junk output. It's junk data card and thermo fluid. So maybe we could actually just put that at the bottom. And I feel like we're going to want to put this a bit further up. Actually, the reason I wanted to put this further up was so we could have a nice, clean, huge storage tank here for the 25 degree output. But we're not going to be able to mirror that up here. We could always do the thermofluid. I O down here. Okay, in any case, so those two should probably face each other. Why do we want to do the input slash output? Well, let's see how fast this is going to be anyway. So this is 12.6 data cards per second. We need less than six to support, well, that's with tier six modules. Let's call this six or so. So about half of that is going to go to spamming quantum processes. And as for directly going into science itself, Matter analysis data, one to one. Uh, broad energy catalog. So one per catalog, but not like one per science pack. Broad catalog is for energy two. And that gets multiplied out if we're doing energy three or four. So I think this one build is probably all we ever need. I hope. Honestly, I don't think we really need two train stops dropping off the blank data cards. Um, maybe we can fit... Pylon's kind of in the way for what I want to do here. Oh, it is just barely in the way. Mm. I think I'd like it better if the fluid tanks were up the top. We could just do negative 275 in, 25 out. The blanks should be slow enough 
Yeah, even with this, it's only 25 per second. So it's really just a matter of fitting it together. Does this reach? It do. We could probably simplify the pipes a bit. Actually, this is seven tiles, right? It is. There's no way we can fit another over there, though, under the beacon. Is that five or... no, it's three. I knew it would be another odd number. There's no way we can fit this much under a half block, right? We need a belt in, a belt out. On the side where the fluid input or output goes. I don't really think there's a need to, anyway. And like I said, we're not cramming it into the half block where we already built it. And also having the junk outputs. Although the blank data card junk outputs come from here. But we still need a solid and a fluid dealt with with the junk outputs. Alright. So we'll probably just do it something like this. A little bit further apart, perhaps. How far can we go? Uh, pretty far, actually. That shouldn't be too difficult at all. Yeah, I like that better. Oh, it lines up with the tanks. I love this. Okay, in that case, how about, how many tiles is that? Five. Could do another straight pipe here. Uh, how about we make the input line up on this side, and the output line up on the other side. I think it's still going to be a little awkward doing the crisscross with the pipes somewhere, but shouldn't be too bad. Should be pretty slow in any case for the thermofluid. The whole thing is only 252 per second. And blank data cards for the entire block are only 25. So, we can avoid any issue of imbalance by just doing it around like this. May as well use deep space belts, I suppose. I want some undergrounds here anyway, and I don't want mismatched belt colors. Yeah, for some reason, I guess it's the texture. These belts are the same speed, but I find it much easier to tell which way 
Uh, the deep space belt is pointing. It's, it's got to be the texture. I mean, that part right there is hard to miss. No matter what frequency this was rendering at, if it looked like it was drifting backward, you'd still have the very obvious... Uh... But what if there's actually stuff on it and you can't see the texture? That should be the same, right? Theoretically, they should be just as difficult to tell which direction they're going. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of look like they're going backwards. Alright, it's definitely the texture. That makes sense. Anyway... Individually, these machines are a whole one blank data card per second. I think we can justify inserters here. And... Well, the output inserters are kind of more awkward. Because they'll have to pick up different... No, I think it's just like one recipe spits out one or the other. So it doesn't spit out both at the same time, so the inserter has to do one thing and then the next. So it really doesn't matter how we do this. Theoretically... I could use the same belt for input and for output but the shape of it would be pretty wonky. Um, do we have to pick this up with short trains? I don't think we do, ever. I've configured it for short trains, but... Consumers are matter analysis data and catalog. And quantum processor. Matter analysis data. That's a long train drop off. Yeah, we could just not bother to allow short trains here. You know what? I, I wouldn't mind having the uh, output belt a different color. And just like this. The whole thing is only going to give us 12.6, it's like 25 and a bit. Yeah, less than 25.2 um, output data cards per second. That is slightly more than half a space transport belt. And I don't want to have to worry about which side of the belt we're putting things on. If there's no need. I could always use a colored deep space belt for the output. How about purple, since that's the color of our... output. Unfortunately, there's no colored deep space loaders. Magenta. Actually, that's just going to make it harder to see the output, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting how the color of the belt under there changes. Alright. So we'll just do the obvious thing here. And like 
like this. And uh, I was actually going to do the input. I was going to wrap around. So that belt goes northward. And that way we don't have to worry about imbalance. And may as well do the same thing over here. Even though I'm sure we don't need two train stops to drop off blank data cards. Okay. So we're going to be requesting negative 273 degree thermofluid, blank data cards. Uh, and here we're going to have... That was the wrong thing to delete. Provide threshold and request stack threshold. Actually, I want to put this over here. That's fine. Uh, and we'll also be asking for blank data cards, but the implicit signal from here is going to deal with the thermofluid output. Couple of train loads, because why not? And half fill this huge storage tank. Oh. Oh, it's fine. So I think for the input fluid on this side, which is how we'll deal with the output fluid on the other side. It's going to be something like this. Um, and we might want to connect this over here. That's convenient. It's less convenient. How many tiles is this? Six. Four. Okay, I don't... I don't love the way... This is going to be asymmetrical, but something somewhere with the fluid crossover is going to have to be that way. Uh, and we could just put this here, I guess. That doesn't actually reach. Alternatively... That might not be so bad. I don't hate this. Oops. So then we have our... We could connect it off of here. That's kind of awkward. How many tiles is this? 20. Could do like four fives. Or a 15 and a five. I think I'd rather the consistency. Uh, but we need that to connect over there as well. Or I could just do this, since we're already doing this pipe. That's fine. And then... Do we connect the 25 degree thermofluid down this way? I think I would like to do the same thing. 
Over here. Oh. Oh, that can change. Yeah, maybe we should just change this part. I like the consistency of this a bit better. Alternatively, we could just connect this over here somewhere. Uh, this is fine. Alright, so I guess the belt's going to have to go all the way down like that. Could use an underground there if necessary. Oops. Uh, and this lot is just going to go over here. Actually, I guess we could make it a bit tidier. By doing more of a zigzag thing again. Might just do that. So we want this output belt to go down here. Long trains only. That's a little awkward. No big deal. Wait, that's the wrong belt. Yep. Don't tell me that doesn't reach. No, it's one tile off. Bruh. Okay. Actually, that's supposed to go there. And that could go there. Alright. And then... If this goes through here... And this snakes up this way. So we've got one continuous belt for the output. We do need to filter off the junk, but that won't be a problem. Quantum phenomenon data and After getting used to purple belts, the limitation of jumping over 16 tiles, as big as it is, starts to feel a bit, I don't want to say oppressive, it's just disappointing. Makes it harder to make things symmetrical. Okay, I kind of want to do the same layout over here, though. Uh, I 
actually, I wonder if we could do it a little bit neater this way. I can definitely live with that. I guess this is slightly more consistent. Looking good. Okay, so how do we connect up the 25 degree? I want it to go in there, but this is in the way. We could maybe do something a bit more symmetrical-ish. How many tiles is that? Three. Yeah, I like that better. I like that a lot better. Alright, let's test it. See if we haven't missed a spot. 20, uh, negative 273, thermo fluid. Why do you not have any... What? Oh, it wants negative 100. That's a pretty good reason. Negative 100. It's still not going... Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So... Let's just check all the machines have thermofluid in, which they do. Fantastic. And now we just need to feed them blank data cards and see them spit out 25 degree thermo fluid. I do realize all the output is going to be on one side of the belt, but we already confirmed. It's going to be like 25.2, slightly less than that, which is a lot less than half a deep space belt. Might just put an underground over here. Looks like they're all working. Fantastic. Let's get rid of most of the excess floor. And well, that'll keep it going for a while. Oops. And fill out some of these gaps for the look of it. Definitely like these little gaps over here. Hmm. Kind of want that to look the same.
Signals between stations? Yeah, we'll get to that. And... This doesn't actually need law under it. That's just for the aesthetic. Maybe I want this to stick out more evenly. How many tiles? No, we have to do the underground on this side, so this is kind of more symmetrical. Why is this different? Because there's no pipe over here. That's fine, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'd be happier with this. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And it looks like it's working. And I imagine 12.6 quantum phenomenon data per second would be enough to support the end game that we have in mind. Okay, let's set up our stations. Quantum phenomenon data. Do, 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 do. Don't need to limit the containers. This one is ye old high priority pickup for quantum, not for junk data card. Don't need fluids. Long trains only. And I think we already configured this. Provide threshold 60k for the thermo fluid. 10k blank data cards, two train loads. 100k super cooled. Looks good. Station name. Blank data and super cold thermo fluid. Uh, sorry, cold thermo fluid. We need to correct this, otherwise, bad things will happen. And over here, blank requester, uh, and also. 25 degree, get rid of her. Oh, and we probably want to add our hieroglyphs to explain what this station is for. Quantum phenomenon data. Signals between stations, signals in general. Looks nice, I like it. All right, let's build this thing. Blueprint. Quantum. This symbol means it should be our endgame build. And... 86.25.1. Uh, don't need the infinity pipes. We already got rid of the infinity chests. And the super inserters. Looks good. E six twenty five one. Fantastic. All right, let's go build it. Uh, 
and we're just going to do it slightly to the south of... Is this who I think it is? That's the construction train. Slightly to the south of the build that we've already got. And maybe we'll refactor this at some point, maybe not. Cool, cool, cool. How have we been doing for quantum processor production? Bit of a dip a few minutes, uh, less than a minute ago. I, yeah, I think I saw this machine wasn't active at the time. I'm sure we're materially bottlenecked, even though we stopped for a while. It takes an enormous amount of holmium to support this build. Should probably check how we're doing for... What the heck is this? Oh no, that's... That's normal. What am I... What am I on about? Uh, anyway, grab our blueprint. And step one, let's get some floor. While that's happening, I want to check in on... Well, I forgot about this, to be honest. Copper has drained out, so we're ready to upgrade that one. Um, but I was also thinking about... What was I thinking about? Some other build that supports the stuff that we're trying to do up here. Definitely wasn't Naquium, but it's good to see Naquium is saturated. How's Holmium doing? Looks like we have a material shortage? No? Where's the bottleneck? Oh, ion beads. We spotted that yesterday and I haven't done anything about it yet. Yeah, we're bottlenecked on ion beads. Let's just make a note here. Okay, now we build. The usual, reduce UPS, increase SPM today, pretty much. Anything more specific? Uh, well, right now we're massively increasing quantum phenomenon data because it's got more than a couple of things that it's a prerequisite for. We need 24 laser facilities. Um, laser facilities. Here we go. What is it stacked to? Five. So that's five stacks. I don't think we're going to have room in the one cargo wagon. We could get rid of the... Uh, space manufactories as well. Electromag facilities. That's probably going to be enough. Welcome in, Owen. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Popped into stream and saw Naquium backed up. That's a great sight to see. It really is. Yeah, I think I overdid making room for... No, not really. Alright, off you go. Um, might need to bring some more speed modules as well. I think we've got some in here. No, I already grabbed them. There's a few efficiencies though. Also some quantum processors. Well, if they end up back in the mall, that's fine. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to check on. How are we doing for blue processors? 
since I've reconnected those wires. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. Looks like we're doing pretty well. It's the only way to be sure. Veldak would like another nuke. Let's go. Where should we nuke? My UPS increaser has recharged. Indeed. What do you suppose we should nuke next? We, we did already try nuking some of the intersections. Uh, it's not as effective as one would imagine. I think when we're down to basically nothing but rail left to nuke, we'll just run a beam over the whole thing or even come back with bots or something. Uh, there's still quite a bit of belt here. Ooh, here we go. Nope, that's basically destroyed already. Belts? Let's do belts. Alright. Fantastic. Nukes away. That dropped the UPS more than I thought it would. While the belts were getting removed. Hmm. Well. I guess that'll help. It was slow motion nuke. It really was. Never seen this part of the base. This is where it all began. Britley would also like a nuke. How about some more belts? Right about here. Britley, this one's for you. All the way down to 17. 16 and a half. So we, we literally halve our UPS while nuking all these belts. That's a bit surprising. Especially... Well, okay. I suppose it makes sense. Um, when belts are backed up, there's obviously some simplification going on in the code, right? So there's not anywhere near as much calculation to do. But... As tile after tile after tile is being changed one after the other because it has to think about it a bit harder anyway that's the nukes done uh let's get some speed modules in here i think it's going to be 50 50 right plus 100 percent minus 80 cool 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 that should already be set to provide speed sixes and we're going to need a few more. Let's send the train back. We need more deep space belt regardless. Let's send the train back again. 101 deep space belt? Don't tell me the train is bringing back 100. It is. No, it's 150. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and we can probably go ahead and switch this on. And I guess uh, we can kill the requests for the old one. And when that stops working, we'll move these across. And again, if we're playing catch up, we may as well leave this running for now. I could lower the priority on it. I don't think it's going to matter since these resources are very, very abundant. Out of Holmium Cable again. Construction train is back at base. Uh, we can probably send this guy back now. And our blank data cards have already arrived. 
Wunderbar. Even more blank data cards? Rude. There should be blanks coming on this side as well. Yep. How's the symmetry? So much symmetry. Where's our... It, here it is. Here's our construction train. Looks like we got the last of the modules. Rate calc says 8.76 per second. 4.38. It should be exactly double what we had before. Yeah, so we've tripled it for the moment. If we leave the old build running, it's all slightly faster than if we saturate this thing with tier 9 modules. Um, 8.76, but this build alone is enough to support this, right? It is, and then some. But our bottleneck has shifted regardless. Holmium Cable. Yeah, we have to fix beads. We need more blue balls. To shift that bottleneck again. Oh no, it's Crynite. Oh no. Maybe we should put some prod nines here. We need 32. I've already got 20. 21. It looks like that's the limit of it. You know what? I kind of regret deprioritizing module production. We've got 28 sevens right here. Um, that's only like 13... No, it's like 6 prod 9s. So... There isn't really a point in... Hurrying that up. We've at least stopped spamming Cryonite rods into efficiency modules. I'm seriously considering getting another Cryonite outpost though. We could start rotting the cryonite, but it's going to be expensive. We could also speed up the cryonite, but we're just going to shift the bottleneck to a material one. We've already balanced this pretty well, like very well actually, like 95% or something, against how many core frags we're getting from the planet. Stop research and maximize prods for a while? That's probably a good idea. Although, we've had research switched on this entire time, and it hasn't moved. We don't have Deep Space 3, because we don't have Deep Space 2, because... Because we don't have significant data? That's a surprising... That's a surprising line. We're missing biological insight. Oh, I never switched this on. Okay, well science basically has been stopped for a while. Um, I guess that explains why it hasn't crept forward like 1% or something. Not that it would creep by only 1%, it would lurch when we get a train load. Um, but yeah, we've actually got plenty of biological insight, for example. I just killed significant data for some reason. Or I, I probably just forgot to switch this on after I moved things. 
I don't want to have to remember this, so we'll switch this on and turn research off. It's still going to cost us a bit. But yeah, I think I'm just going to get rid of the deprioritization of the modules. I mean, the reason we did it was actually because we suddenly had no cryonite. Um, but mostly that was because we were spamming efficiency sixes when, when we had so many already. I guess I'll stop procrastinating it. Let's go make a new outpost. Um... Should we go for this tiny little moon over here? I think so. The fact that it's like almost as close as Verb T or Achilles. It, it's about as close as Muir. Even if the drills are not that fast, just the fact that it's so close is really, really helpful. All right. Let's go make ourselves a new outpost. Never thought we would need another Cryonite planet, but here we go. What's it called? Zakhol. Zakhol orbit, please. It's been a while since I made an outpost. I'm going to have forgotten some of the procedure here. Welcome in Captain True, by the way, and Ohio Soro. Yeah, we could just add more drills um, on our home planet, but we're down to the point where a new drill gives us only like two per second or so, uh, and it's going to get worse and worse with each additional drill. And we've already... Uh, we've already tapped, like, two-thirds, I think, of the available... It's at least half of the available, um, core seams on this planet. We've done 25, there's 41 available. So rather than go deeper and deeper and deeper into diminishing returns, covering the entire planet, making the footprint bigger if we ever get around to trimming the surface, uh, I think instead we'll make a new little outpost over here. Alright, so before we land, we should probably place our big ol' outpost blueprint. Find the zero zero. Uh, Zach all orbit. It's up here. And grab our blueprint, which I'm sure is out of date. Version 2. Dispatch V3. Yeah, no, that's it. Alright. We'll start with we'll we'll start with this. We need the floor in any case. Uh and we'll copy paste edit from one of our existing outposts. That's going to take some time. We've got tons of construction bots. What's the problem? You're in construction mode. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, 
let me guess, there's no room for the space elevator at zero zero on the ground. GPS equals zero comma zero comma Zach Hall. Where the heck is it? It should be here. Did I do it wrong? GPS tag specifies invalid surface. Z A K H O L. I don't understand. Did I? Is it because I added a space? Yeah. Kazrith, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, so we're trying to. Whoops. No. God. God damn it. Uh, so we're trying to place our uh, space elevator here, which means these rocks need to be moved. Fortunately, we have the ability to use the force. The cheating, it's absurd. No, 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 no cheating here. Not even once. There we go. Now, why did that not mirror this up here? I guess the blueprint itself is on one surface. Or the ghost, I should say. I forgot to even check if there's biters on this planet. I don't think there are. Threat 3%. Okay, uh, it's a like 1.1k radius moon. We could probably just find them. Or beam them. That'll work. Let's borrow one of these beams. What are you doing? Energizing. Energizing. Do we have any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a couple that are... Superfluous here. Zach Hall Autoglave. Why did it switch off? No coordinates set. Autoglave. There we go. Should have already jumped to... Oh, it hasn't found any biters because we haven't explored the area yet. All right, scan, scan surface, fantastic. All right, um, out of storage. Oh, we don't have any storage, that's why. Alright, so to make sure we don't miss anything that I've changed since blueprinting this stuff, we're just going to copy from VerbT. It's not going to include the channel settings, so there's no, there's no stress just yet. What outpost number are we up to though? It's actually a pretty good question. I think we've got them all listed here. Number 8, 13, 15, 17. I think we had 20 something. Oh. Yeah, 21. Twenty two. That's probably it. Muir. I think Muir was the last one that we bothered to update to the new system. Yeah, that is probably the last one. How are we doing for beaming? Jack Cyber, thank you for the follow. 
Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so what's this called again? Zack Hole. Also, before we do that, let's search for large gold text plate, entity, all surfaces. Okay. Xorion is number 18. 22. It's a lot of outposts. Wait, was that 23? 21, 3, no. 19... Okay, so I'm pretty sure 22 Muir Orbit was our last one put into the new system. So this will be 23. And it's Zach Hall. Seems good. We're already charging. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, can we start energy beaming yet? Still haven't seen any biters. Uh, what's the radius of this planet again? 1175. So right here, what, why can't I, there it is, that's the southern tip of the map. Not going to take too long to reveal the entire planet, and there's going to be like seven biters or so. Hope you have a nice day too, thank you. Okay. Did we already build all this? We did. Alright. So let me start reminding myself what needs to be updated here. Right here we need to have our local address, which is Moon Orbit 1010. No anomaly signal because we're just coming straight here. Uh, and this is going to be Cryonite, number 23. That part's not technically necessary, it just helps us uh, keep track of these things and see at a glance where a, sh uh, where a ship is headed. We'll be able to see it on the memory cell. This is a offset, a, a unique offset for uh, the timing of all of the outposts racing to report to central. Uh, and if there's a signal collision, we'll just try again. Uh, over here, that's how we get home. Don't need to change that. This is going to be Cryonite. There's a number of signal types we have to change to Cryonite core frag. I think there's about six or seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And seven would be this one that's a bit hidden. It's just the logistic filter for the storage chests. Cool. Uh, none of this needs changing, I don't believe. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going to want 50 Logibots in each side when we're done over here. Alright, can we see some biters yet? Nope. There really is just going to be like seven biters on this planet. I guess we could start designing uh, some rail. I think... Is it Gibbel? No. I think Oswolf maybe. Was where I like to copy paste our uh, stackers for the trains. Not that we'll be needing three trains here, but I kind of like it standardized. And we're going to want a corner rail right about here. So that's our shortest path back up the space elevator. And for our first drill, might be convenient. That's a little too far away. Might be convenient if we put it Oh, that's one off. Right about here, perhaps. Yeah, that fits pretty easily. Cool. Uh, and then... Just double check where I usually put this. That's not... Uh, that's actually pretty good. That's very good, actually. No, I tell a lie. We are going to need one extra power pole. Just to connect circuit wires. That's fine. Alright, let's start building. I don't think I brought any pylons, though. I did. Where are the biters? We really are going to have to scan the entire planet to find them. Well, as long as they don't get around to attacking us. Alright. Green wire to global. Red wire to the decider combinator. We got to bring a drill. And these should all be max distance. Just double check that. Yep. Cool. Nice and tidy. Uh, and we're going to have to make some trains. Left only. Both directions. Left only. Should fit pretty easily. Yes. Okay. I wonder if I could... Why do I not have a train blueprint in this blueprint book? It seems the obvious place for it. Now where can I find an idling train? Uh, I guess this works. Trains only. I 
guess just the space locomotive symbol. That should have the right schedule on it. And then I wonder... I'm pretty sure this won't work. No. I can't place it wrapped around this... Uh, this corner here, as convenient as that would be. I guess we could start here. And we're going to need... Mostly... Space... What am I talking about? Uh, electric... Advanced additional electric engines. Here we go. I think we need, like... Seven on each side. And some solar panels and some batteries. In case I run out of those. Alright. That's fine. And on this side... It's already there. What? Wait, 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 what? I, th I, th I think we just happened to have a space locomotive in here that was recycled. Because the bots won't insert that stuff for us. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Kind of hate the asymmetry of that. Alright, cool. Uh, and give us some charged packs. There aren't any. Give us some charged packs. Alright. Uh, not verb T, but Zachol. Is where we need to go. Up and down the elevator. Down you go. Fantastic. One or two more of those. Uh, let's get some drills. Where did I put the drills? Downstairs we go. Why is this not powered? It's actually a pretty good question. I guess I just have to click this. There we go. There we go. Looks like we're belt bottlenecked? Not quite. Uh, in any case, as we keep adding drills, the individual drills get slower. So belt bottleneck would disappear. Destination full. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, that is functional. Let's get the next drill. Actually, where are the biters? I don't think we can factory search for biters. Sadly. What we can do is try the autoclave again. Switching off. Okay, so that's a no. If we actually search the entire planet uh, and find zero biters, I'm going to be slightly annoyed. Um, so let's put this one right about here. Oh, is that, is that a cozy fit? That's a cozy fit. Very nice. And can 
connect that over here. That doesn't actually quite work. Uh, I guess... Rip, cozy, fit. It's going to have to be front left. And that is... That is a less cozy fit. Feels bad. I guess we could put it here. That's not too bad. Alright. So... Northward permitted. Both directions permitted. This way only. Not that we need to do that. And... This is both directions. Cool. We're getting 21 point... 244 per second. Back home, the entire planet is giving us... 107 per second. And we've just added almost 20% with two drills. Need to get some more bulk rail loaders. Uh, I really would like to do these one at a time so I don't have to remember anything. Bulk rail loaders should be here. And... Gonna need some more train stops, potentially. What else was I looking for? A few more drills. Uh, how much blue belt am I carrying? Far more than enough now. regular rail. It doesn't... you could put space rail downstairs if you, uh, if you like the aesthetic, but there's no reason. Guess I'll just toss this in here. Don't need it right now. That's a lot of blue belt. Definitely don't need that much. Okay. Grab some more rail. Or just all of it. All of it works. Okay, how are we doing how are we gonna do our This is not going to fit very cosily either way. I guess we'll just do it over here. Round pylons. That's actually pretty nice. Green wire to global. Uh, and we should be able to see... I haven't connected it upstairs. Alright, so we should be able to see here the space train power packs and cables from upstairs. We've already got one destroyed space train power pack. Rude. Uh, but yeah, that is connected to global, and so is that. Fantastic. We've already got 2.7k cryonite waiting. Let's add another one up here. Uh, maybe this time it will fit cozily. Nope. Feels bad. Eros, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I guess I... Nope, never mind. I guess I like... I dislike this the least. That's fine. 
and rail goes up this way. I guess we don't need that. Where's my trusty little corner? Alright. Um, and I think we'll continue this. Like so. Probably go this way again. Put this up here. How much more scanning do we have to go? We're almost done. I still don't see any biters. I think we've been lied to. About the biter menace. That's already working, and that's already connected to global. Fantastic. So that's three drills, giving us a total of 26 per second. About a quarter more than we already had. How many, uh... We've probably seen all of the, um... Four seams on this planet by now. How many are there? Only 16. I think we should just tap the entire planet. It's very easy to rain. Okay. Let's hit this one next. And... Probably like that. Gonna need an underground. That's fine. And we're just gonna have... Rail... Heading out like so. Actually, I guess it's gonna be another... Another T intersection. So that way, both ways, no wait, this way only, and this one will be both ways. Yeah, that should be fine. Cute little corner. And power poles. Hmm. I guess the one on the left works out a bit neater. Might just do a diagonal here. It's not quite right. There we go. Where are we standing? Over here. Maybe I should have brought the Spidertron. How's my battery charge? It doesn't even go down. Cool, cool, cool. 
I wish we could fit that kind of power production in Spidertrons. That looks good. Why is this not connected? Oh, did I use the wrong blueprint? Seems that way. Here we go. Connected to global. Fantastic. And we already have core frags. Nice. Actually, I might just rotate this so that this is nice and visible. Okay. Next. We're going to get all of them, so it doesn't really matter what order we do them in. Let's go for the nearest ones. This one covered in rare metals and cryonite. And uranium. Kind of weird. Where are we going to fit our station? Front left. That's decent. That was way too far. I forgot to rotate this. Makes it a bit more confusing flicking through them if they don't all face the same way. Alright, so that one's already done, right? Seems reasonable. I've got plenty of bots. I'm not sure what they're what they're up to here. Basic, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Rose, PP, welcome in. How many hours do you have on this save? Uh, yes. A lot. A lot of hours. Several, in fact. This keeps up long enough, it'll be measured in months. Now, not all of that is active playtime, but yeah, it's still quite a bit. Uh, I don't think the wire is going to reach across here. So we'll have to add one of these over here. Damn, indeed. <laughs> We did technically win the game quite a while ago, but uh, what I thought was a fairly modest goal of continuous three science per second, no matter which science uh, we're researching, turns out to be fairly aggressive. That explains a lot about the size of these bases interplanet uh, and the UPS, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely keep your UPS a bit higher if, you're, if your target is a bit more modest. I also uh, took the massively reduced stack size of the core fragments as a personal insult and a challenge. So despite them only stacking to 20, uh, we're still having spaceships... Carry core fragments. No, that's not a good example. Well, it is about to be a good example. Uh, in a future playthrough, I would probably do a lot more processing on the spot. I've been thinking about trying to do kind of like what we've already got, but better for an LTN-ish spaceship dispatch system. 
uh, that instead of just going out and getting XYZ core fragments and bringing them back, it could actually send all kinds of things to all kinds of places so that the actual outposts themselves could be sort of like rail blocks with their various inputs and outputs. Um, it's pretty difficult, though, trying to design that with combinators. All right, so that's connected to global. Um, we should probably be checking... Hold control for, to make a temp rail stop. Uh, a temp schedule. Uh, we should probably be checking that we've got path. That we haven't missed any bits of rail. Fantastic. Um... Where else are our core seams? Probably want to put this here. That's not quite right. I either need to... I guess I hate this the least. With the snap two of the rail and the positioning of the core drills. So we're going to go this way. Uh, this way. Don't forget the power poles. Nice not having to deal with water. So are there any biters on this planet? Let's find out. Uh, confirm hostile extinction. There were no biters, despite it saying 3% threat. Lamau. It's fine. Let's get some power poles laid out. Or designed out. Mm. We're not going any further here. Maybe I'll do a diagonal. That doesn't quite line up the way I want it to. In fact, that's extremely rude. Um, maybe one more horizontal. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of... I'm going to get rid of the two blueprints in this book that don't have the green wires because I'm never, ever using them. Okay, what if we go down here? Still going to need another pole. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep. All right, let's get over there. We've got our signals. Did I run out of cliffies? I think I did. Would it be better? Yeah, I think it would be better to go back to the spaceship first. I could make the spaceship land here instead, but... I don't really feel like... It's better if the resupply is at the middle of the planet anyway. Uh, acceleration is a bit slower, but it's probably better if we fly. I do wish we could sprint with the exoskeleton legs and then keep that momentum with the jet uh, jetpack. All right. What were we short on? Cliff explosives. Where do we keep those? Bot things? Yeah, bot things. Whoop. 
that's not what I meant to do. Don't need this many construction bots either. I also took all the repair packs. And roboports. And etc. Okay. Down we go. Should have brought the spider. Alright, where are we going? I think I almost went past... our current predicament. The bots are getting really slow to respond sometimes. to central and there's no belts missing or anything fantastic all right so we've done one two three four five six we've got ten to go can we make that line up exactly kind of yeah the core seam is in the way but there's no um there's no further Core seams out in this direction. So I kind of want to... kind of want to make this line up like that. Do you have to perf uh, protect all the planets from solar flares? Yes. Or in this late game, there's no more threat. Uh, well... The threat is trivial to deal with this late, definitely. So what we've got in orbit... Oops. Uh, we've got an umbrella right here. Oh, and these are the uh, media defenses. The flat solar panel 3 has a base power production of 1.6 megawatt. Uh, if it was on Nalvis in the middle of the day. Out here it only gives us... Oh, sorry, it's in orbit, so we're getting way more. Um, yeah, we're getting 4.2 megawatt from each flat solar panel at this range from the sun in orbit. Uh, so it's pretty trivial to, uh, to deal with the CME. Didn't know you could protect the planet uh, with the umbrella from orbit, indeed. I don't know if that was a change... Um, it was definitely changed at some point that media defense installations would protect both the planet and the orbit. Um, I don't know if the umbrella was changed at the same time or not, but yes, this is sufficient. Uh, did I just go past? I did. That was unnecessary. Alright, let's clear this out a bit. Grab a station. I guess it doesn't really matter if we go for front left or front right.
muted? Uh, apparently I was, yes. I hope... I hope I wasn't just talking to myself explaining the solar panels and CME. No, I, we got... Arrows responded to that. Yeah, I must have just got something backward when I was clearing my throat. Uh, we're going to need to actually build this to see if it's connected. I've thought about trying to do a setup whereby I can hear my own voice from the microphone. But apparently even the tiniest, tiniest bit of lag with that can be extremely disorienting. Alright. Do we have... Connection. We do. And we should have path... Yes, yes, yes. Cool. So that leaves us at uh, entity. Seven out of sixteen. Nine to go. I think this one's going to be a little bit awkward for the distance to turn a corner here. No, it should be fine. Front left. Maybe that's not quite right. Could maybe do it something like this. What if I just do it over here? Then we've got room for a corner pretty easily. That should be plenty of room. And then we don't need to... Oh, we do need to be able to turn this way. Just not on the way back. Not clear on where that'll actually fit. There we go. So the reason we're able to get away with two-way rail everywhere in this rail network is the individual stations get slower and slower the more we add them. So it doesn't really matter that the train has to be able to make its entire journey without interruption. Oh, that's rude. There's no more... Eh, there kind of is. I guess I could just put it over here. That's fine. That'll cover everything. And connect to global once we actually build that out. Am I out of poles? I think I'm out of poles. Or at least the... What are the odds of that? Bruh, closest spaceship. This had better actually be accurate. Yes, it is. Uh. Well aware that I'm suffocating. Thank you. Gimme. Okay. What happened to my... Oh, we don't normally carry this ammo. Because that's just for plague rockets. Okay. Um, 
Where's my life support? Oh, it equipped the power armor. Get out of here. There we go. Alright, lighted pylon. We already have the substations. I just need the pylons. Well, I have to admit I was not expecting our one train that's been sitting here idle the entire time to just be waiting to run me over right the instant I got through here. There's no Logibots on this side. Yes, there are. What's their problem? Oh, it's because we're connected to this stuff. Yep, that makes sense. Because we have a generic... Uh, generic bit of circuitry here that we don't have to change the core fragment type for. It's looking for 22k of anything. And there's definitely more than 22k of something here. No? Wait, what? Oh, that's green. Which part's red? This part. 14,000. So we've got fifth... Yeah, it's because it's merged the two robot networks. This is supposed to be two separate ones. Okay, that's fine. Uh, back to whatever it was we were doing. Power poles. Look both ways before we get hit by a train. I'm actually surprised. I, I guess a bunch of the train stops would have been reaching threshold at more or less the same time. So it's not that improbable. Alright, connected to global. Fantastic. Alright, once more. Without getting hit by a train. Where the heck is it? Core scene. Front left. Once again, it's not a cozy fit. Feels bad. I guess we'll... I guess we'll do it like this. Might have to deal with those trees though. Did I go past it again? Okay. Corner. Right about here. I wonder if I could make raised rail the rule rather than the exception. Once that's a thing. That might even reach, but I doubt it. To get the green wire connected. Time you're ready. There we go. Not gonna lie, the random bot delays are getting a little bit annoying. 
Do we have a whole bunch of ghosts or something marked for deconstruction somewhere? Maybe we forgot to remove some ghosts from Nalvis? No, I think we did get rid of these ghosts. Yeah, because if you have a whole lot of floor planned out somewhere or something, it can make the bots much, much slower to react. It does reach. Nice. And I don't think there's any bits of belt missing or anything like that. Let's double check that we've got path. We do. It is, of course, possible that we've got path here but not back. Like, if we accidentally put a signal in the wrong place or missed a signal. But considering that what we're using is all pre-blueprinted, probably not. Alright, let's head over to this quarter. And I guess we're going to do rails straight through here. And then just like that. First victim is over here. Front right. Maybe. That's... That's not going to fit so well. I think we're going to drive past... This drill a little bit. So... Back right. Just like this. And... Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer? Probably just continue that rail down here. No, we're going to go this way anyway, so we'll just branch off again. It's not that far to go, but if I was feeling particularly lazy, I could make some temp stops. Use the train to get around. Double check that that lines up. I guess I can always help the bots like this. That does make it a bit faster. Didn't drag the power poles out this far yet. Diagonal doesn't quite work out here. I guess it's better than the alternative. Alternatively, no, that's fine. Let's just put this down here. All right, connected to global. And good to go. And we do have four frags all the way through. Fantastic. Okay. Next. We're going to continue in this direction. And no further than this drill right here. Front right. Maybe. That's fine. Uh, and let's 
let's just get rid of the straight rail over here. Where are my power poles? Way back this way. A better diagonal is going to fit better here. That's pretty good, actually. That is super tidy, as a matter of fact. Alright, the train shouldn't run us over while we're laying new rail. Probably. The bots are taking their sweet time jumping out if I do that. What? Oh, Nalvis. We don't care about Nalvis. It's getting hit by meteorites. And here I was thinking there were actually biters on this planet, even though I know we... Well, it's a moon, but I, I know we declared... Uh, we checked and declared it extinct. How is that cryonite on a waterless planet? What the heck is cryonite? It's definitely not frozen water. Alright, that's already connected. Uh, we don't have power because that's not a wide beacon. There we uh, a wide pylon. Fantastic. So that just leaves one, two, three, four, I think five to go. What's our current rate? Uh, that looks like ten. Yep. 47.5 per second. So we're getting close to adding 50% to what we already had. Um, I think for these two, I'd like to extend this rail up here. And we'll just add some signals over here. Front right, I suppose. It'll have to do. And front left. We're not getting many super cozy uh super cozy fits here with the train stops. Sad. I guess we'll do it like, like this. Alright, so rail goes all the way up here. And like so. Power poles. I guess this is closer. And this way. Maybe a, another 45 degree. Yeah, that's definitely going to be neater this time. Alright, let's go build that. Actually, I haven't checked... One, two... I haven't actually built this one yet. Oops. Should probably do that while we're physically closer. Hey, we got one. Nice, cozy fit. And 
and then we need a little intersection. And power poles. Oh wow, that's a beautiful fit. Very elegant. So that's going to go... Oh, that's already connected. Got to double check that we're connected to central, though. When it just fits, indeed. Alright, that looks good. And that looks good. I guess that one's done already. Let's head over to do these two, and then there's only two left after that. Not sure which rail I should branch off of. Probably... maybe this one. Okay. We're going to have a lot of core frags here by the time I finish. By the time we're configuring the uh, spaceships to come here. Making a drop off back at Hagen. Haven't made a Cryonite core frag drop off yet. Because we've only been using the Cryonite core frags on the planet. Or on the moon. I wouldn't be surprised if this is all we need. Then again, I wouldn't have been surprised if Hagen was all we ever need. A Cryonite. But we are adding more than 50%. And it's super, super close for the spaceships. That's already connected. Fantastic. And there's the belt working. Still got plenty of rail. Where's our train? Oh, it's not coming back until we start consuming core frags up here. Um, okay, there's no harm in sending it down. And then, while that's out of the way, we should probably make another one. And I think that'll prevent it from coming up the space elevator. Well, regardless... No! Never mind. I was going to get it to stop here so that we could use it for pathing checks. Now I need to go back and put the batteries and stuff in the other one. Uh, what am I doing? Regular corner. this to global. It's already done. Fantastic. Alright, but we are about to, to finish up for today. Let's find someone to raid. May or may not continue some of this easy, repetitive stuff off stream. Uh, at, at most, we'll start tomorrow where I've got the 
or for uh, the uh, outpost setup complete. Who should we uh, raid today? Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out, Total. Veldak, Captain True. Eros, Dylan, everyone else, including all you lovely likers. Uh, that's not Factorio. What? Oh. I think, I think Mr. DDR Jake forgot to change his category. Okay. We raided Mucky not that long ago. Oh, here we go. Nope, that is not English. There's a whole lot of not English space exploration going around. Deutsch Sestina, I'm sure I'm butchering that. Pick something. Nihonjin. Oh, here we go. Nope, that's not SE. I don't think we're going to get another SE and or K2 right this second without going multilingual. Who should we raid then? Oh, this one is English as well. But it's not SE though. Uh, okay, I need to pick something. Why don't we drop in on Raslington? It's been a minute, I'm pretty sure. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And till next time, stay safe. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for dropping by Veldak as well. See you tomorrow, guys.